At the age of three, he corrected his father's math. At seven, he solved problems before his teacher finished writing them. At 19, he shattered a problem that had stood for 2,000 years, with nothing but a compass and a calm stare. But the brilliance came with a shadow. He buried geniuses in silence, claimed discoveries he never published. He lifted civilization with his mind and broke those who couldn't keep up. Was he the greatest mind in history or the coldest? A prophet of numbers or their prison guard? This is the story of Carl Friedrich Gauss, the silent thunder. April 30th, 1777. Brunswick, Germany, Carl Friedrich Gauss was born with nothing. No books, no fortune, no name. His father was a gardener's assistant, bricklayer, and later a treasurer for a small trading firm or construction business. His mother could barely write. But in the stillness of that small room, a spark lit the world. At seven, he solved in seconds what others took an hour. The problem? Teacher asks the students to add the numbers from one to 100. The trick? He didn't add. He saw structure, balance, a pattern. The world blinked and Carl Gauss was already gone. Before he could read stories, he read numbers. He taught himself to count, then to write then to think. Not from lessons, from obsession. He didn't follow instructions, he followed the truth. A child like this didn't belong in a classroom. He belonged to history. The Duke of Brunswick saw it and opened the gates. Gauss would never be poor again. Not in mind, not in opportunity. A patron was found and the genius was unleashed. At 15, he entered Collegium Carolinum. He didn't fit in, he stood out. Gauss studied Latin, Greek, mathematics and physics here. He was exposed to Enlightenment thinkers and scientific rigor, particularly under professors like E.A.W. Zimmerman. The Collegium Carolinum was the bridge between his raw talent and formal mathematics. At Göttingen, the boy became a storm. This is where he met Abraham Gotthelf Kestner, a professor of mathematics known more for his wit than groundbreaking work. He encouraged Gauss's pursuits. Göttingen was a major intellectual center, though Gauss kept to himself and rarely interacted socially. He began writing what the world wouldn't understand for decades, number theory, geometry, astronomy. He didn't sleep he calculated. By 21, he had seen deeper than anyone alive, and yet the world still didn't know his name. It didn't matter, because Carl Friedrich Gauss was just getting started. For 2,000 years, it was thought impossible a 17-sided polygon drawn with just a ruler and compass. Gauss didn't guess, he proved. At 19, the Greeks called it sacred. He made it solvable. In 1801, he dropped a book like a bomb. Number theory, formalized, purified, reborn. Congruences, modular arithmetic, quadratic reciprocity. Ideas so deep, the world is still catching up. It wasn't just a textbook, it was scripture. The world lost a planet. Gauss found it with math. He didn't observe, he predicted. 
using a method he invented, least squares. He gave astronomers the coordinates. They found Ceres in the exact spot. Gauss didn't chase the stars. He bent them to equation. He studied surfaces that twisted space, invented new tools, defined Gaussian curvature, proved Theorema Egregium, the shape of a surface lives inside it. He touched the edge of Einstein's world a century too early. Geometry was no longer flat. Reality was no longer simple. He discovered non-Euclidean geometry in secret. He feared controversy, ridicule. He stayed silent. Years later, others would publish what Gauss already knew. When they did, he said, to praise it would be to praise myself. He chose silence over revolution. The fundamental theorem of algebra, proved by many, but only Gauss proved it beautifully. Not once, not twice, four times, each from a different angle. He wasn't solving a problem, he was illuminating a truth. When others feared randomness, Gauss tamed it. He used probability to weigh measurements, to reduce error, to make sense of noise. The bell curve became his signature, the Gaussian curve, the shape of uncertainty, made predictable. He helped birth electromagnetism, measured Earth's magnetic field, sent the first coded signals by wire. He didn't shout about it, but he helped build the future again. A 22-year-old genius reached out to Gauss. He had just cracked the quintic equation, something once thought impossible. But Gauss never replied. Abel died poor, unrecognized, at 26. The master never even read the letter. Bolyai had done it. Non-Euclidean geometry. A world where parallel lines diverged. Gauss read it and dismissed it. I thought of it years ago, he said. No praise, no support, just the echo of his own shadow. Boliai never recovered from the silence. Gauss used the method to find Ceres, but Legendre had published it first. Gauss claimed he had discovered it earlier, in private notes. He gave no credit, and history took his side because Gauss didn't lose, even when he was late. Eugene defied him, lived freely, thought differently. Gauss called it foolish, refused to fund his education. Eugene sailed to America, alone. In a letter he wrote, I had a father, not a friend. Gauss mastered numbers, but he failed people. He made discoveries decades before others, he found elliptic functions, anticipated Riemann, sketched ideas of topology, but he kept them to himself. He said, few will read it, fewer will understand it. So the world waited for what he never gave. He demanded rigor, discipline, perfection, and destroyed ideas that didn't meet his standard. He rejected speculation, he feared error, but in doing so, he crushed boldness. Genius became a gate, and Gauss held the key. One voice pierced the silence. Sophie Germain, denied by society, disguised by name. But Gauss saw her mind and honored it. He called her courage heroic. In a life of cold dismissal, this was warmth. He built an empire of numbers, but ruled it alone. He changed the world, but blocked the door behind him. Even genius can cast a shadow, and the man who counted everything couldn't count what it cost.
The world was changing. Science was accelerating, machines, magnets, electricity. But Gauss stood still. He had shaped the foundations. Now the building rose without him, and he didn't climb it. He withdrew from colleagues, from collaborators, from the community he helped create. New minds craved feedback. He gave silence. They built the future. He watched from behind glass. Relativity, field theory, curved space, all rooted in ideas Gauss had touched. But he never shouted them, never claimed them. Others made them loud. Gauss had made them alone. He never called Eugene back. He never apologized, never embraced the life his son chose. He clung to order and lost love. His family drifted like unmeasured stars. The electromagnetic telegraph spread across continents, built on the work Gauss began. But he didn't stand beside it, didn't sign his name. He gave birth to communication and said nothing. He left behind notebooks no one had seen, proofs untouched, ideas half a century ahead, no ceremony, no final statement, only pages and silence. He died in 1855, no monument, no headline, his grave as modest as his life was immense, the world barely noticed until much later. Karl Gauss didn't chase glory. He didn't seek legacy. But legacy came anyway, in every equation, in every orbit, in every silence between the notes. His voice echoes not through what he said, but what he left unsaid. If this story moved you even a little, please consider liking the video especially our loyal subscribers who see it first. It really helps the algorithm share it with more people who might need to hear it. And if it didn't resonate with you, we'd still love to hear your thoughts. Honest feedback helps us improve and make better content. If you'd like to see more stories like this, you know where to find us. You can also reach out on social media. Links are on the screen and in the description. We'd love to connect. Thanks for being here. Stay thoughtful, stay curious.